We're up here on Buckland Beacon, which is an impressive 382 metres above sea level. Buckland Beacon is located in the parish of Buckland in the Moor, which is very close to the town of Ashburn on Dartmoor. Buckland Beacon, as the name suggests, was once the site of an important signal fire, and story has it that in 1588 a fire was lit here to alert the rest of the British Isles to the arrival of 130 ships that made up the Spanish Armada. In more recent years, a beacon fire has yet again been lit to celebrate the Jubilees as well as the Millennium celebrations. Buckland Beacon is quite well known across Dartmoor as being the location of the Ten Commandment Stones. In 1928, the adoption of the new Common Book of Prayer was rejected by Parliament. This was seen as a victory for Protestantism in Britain, as the new Common Book of Prayer was a worryingly popish trend. Someone who really shared this view was the then Lord of the Manor, Mr William Whitley of Wells Tor. Mr Whitley commissioned the carving of the Ten Commandment Stones to celebrate this momentous occasion. Mr W. A. Clements was the stonemason who was commissioned to undertake this work and he completed it in August of 1928. As well as the Ten Commandments, he also included an eleventh, which is love one another. He also put the dates that the bill was read out in the Houses of Parliament, the 15th of December 1927, the 14th of June 1928. There was room underneath for a quotation, a favourite quotation of Mr Whitley's. There is a power which man can wield when mortal aid is vain, that eye, that arm, that love to reach, that listening ear to gain, that power is prayer. The stones were restored in the 1990s by the Dartmoor National Park Authority, but due to the incredibly exposed nature of the site here, the stones are once again in need of restoration. The local community of Buckland in the Moor have received a grant from the More Than Meets the Eye scheme, as well as funding from the Dartmoor Communities Fund, and as you can see, the stones are once again being brought back to their former glory for the local community and visitors to enjoy. I'm joined now by Ian Cotton. Ian is the conservator and lettering expert who is undertaking this restoration process. Ian, thanks ever so much for joining me and taking, out, taking some time out from this uh, very challenging task ahead of you. So Ian, perhaps you could explain a little bit more about the initial stage of the restoration. The, the first stage is uh, a cleaning phase. Uh, and what we're doing is we're trying to clean just the letters leaving the face of the stone covered in this rich flora of lichen, um, trying to hold on to the essential quality of these mm. objects in their landscape. Uh, and we're doing that by giving the stones uh, a light, dry, general brush, and then specifically uh, cleaning the letters uh, using these fantastic little German stainless steel brush pens that I sourced. And is this something that you've bought specifically for this project? Uh, yeah, I researched the internet just to find these lovely little brushes. Well, they're fantastic. Um, so yeah, a dry brush in the letters. Uh, and then we're, we're painting by a side into the letters themselves. Again, to really knock back the lichens in the letters, ready for the next phase. And the next phase um, is, as I understand it, the carving and the painting of the letters. When we return, there will be, uh, we'll clean the biocide out of the letters. Then there is a, a selective carving phase where we're going to um, just deepen and refine those letters that are most badly worn. Okay. And as you've probably found out, this is an incredibly popular site for visitors and tourists. Have you had much interest from members of the public? Oh, we've had loads of interest, yeah. <laughs> lots of people coming up and talking to us about, about what we're doing And are they, are they excited to see, really to see this process? They're really enthusiastic to see the stones being restored to legibility so, oh. so, that, they can be, you know, so that they can be read again. That's wonderful. Hello there, I'm joined at the Ten Commandment Stones by Guy and Annette who are members of the local community and regular visitors to the site here with their two dogs. Uh, Guy and Annette, thanks ever so much for joining me and taking the time out from your walk. So you're regular visitors here, how, how long have you been coming to, to visit the site? For how many years? Oh, 50, 50 <laughs> years. We A used to live time. just down the yeah. hill here and we'd walk up uh, when we were courting really. We'd yes. come up here and yeah. sit. It hasn't changed. No. view hasn't changed, nothing's changed, uh, so it's, 
<laughs> well over 50 years actually. <laughs> so how do you feel about the stones being brought back to there, to, to, back to life? Fantastic. Absolutely delighted. Yeah, I, absolutely. Just, so yeah. pleased, I'm so pleased that a lot of people will be thrilled as well. Yeah. A lot of visitors who come back every year. So do you meet many people on holiday who specifically come to visit this site? Yes. Oh well. Very often. Yes, and down at the cattle grid, we often bump into people who say, is this the way to see the Ten Commandments? Oh, really? And all nationalities? Yes, <laughs> oh, certainly. Yes, yeah. Americans, and ja all Germans. nationalities. Yeah. Now, yeah. All nationalities come <coughs> yes, here, French. Chinese, wow. Singapore, as you, you know, as you know, they, 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 yeah. they just love the history. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so important it, to them, and they research it. And how important is the site to the local community? Very important. Very, <laughs> very important. important. Yeah. Um, they were very interested when we first uh, told them at a parish meeting that the stones were fading rapidly yeah. and um, we said you know would you be what do you think about it guy and I trying to get some money get investigate see if something's possible to save yeah. them and uh, they were thrilled they just <laughs> said, they just said yes oh go, that's go fantastic. ahead you know. and and Annette, you have a personal connection to the Ten Commandments stones, don't you? I do. The, the Whitley family that uh, owned the parish and these stones, they were very kind to three generations of my family going back, mm. uh, and I felt I could somehow repay, in a small way, that debt. Oh, but, that's lovely. Uh, because it was times when things were tough and they, you yeah. know, and, and this is one way now, when we're living in uh, a time when um, it's possible to do more things, yes, uh, and we can do that, and it's happened. And how it's do you great. think they would feel uh, seeing the work in progress today? They'd be delighted. My mm. granny would have it in her scrapbook, <laughs> and she would be absolutely thrilled, wouldn't she? Yes, definitely. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. it's very important. So it's been three weeks since Ian Cotton and his team were at the Ten Commandments and we're here yet again. Uh, Ian, so can you please update us on the next phase of the work? Okay, well, um, we've given the biocide a couple of weeks to do its thing. We return to site. Now we're cleaning all the dead lichens from out of the letters to actually finally get down to some good stone. And the next part of the process <laughs> is uh, some selective recarving. I've just put my chisel through a line here just to see how to get a feel for it. See how the letters are, mm. are beginning to stand out a little bit more. Each part of the process, you're just trying to reveal uh, reveal the letters a little more. Um, just try and tighten them up a little more. Yeah, and as you say, they, they really are coming out here just with that little bit of these tools, are they tools specifically for use on granite or are they sort of standard standard carving tools? Um, this is actually a, it's a granite lettering chisel, yes. So it is specifically made for granite. The dummy is just the carver's mallet. Okay, excellent. So in the last film I described you as a conservator and lettering expert. Um, so that's quite an intriguing uh, way, uh, dove title. Can you tell us more about your background? Yeah, sure. Interestingly, this project brings together a kind of couple of worlds for me. Uh, I trained as a sculptor originally, um, and then I started working in stone conservation, so a sort of informal apprenticeship in stone conservation as a carver and a mason, conservator. Uh, and I worked as a journeyman in that world for about 20 years working on all sorts of historic buildings and modern yeah. Uh, always as a freelancer. And alongside that I developed an interest in, in lettering and carving letters. And so, so this brings together those two worlds, conservation yeah. background and yeah. uh, the interest and experience in, in lettering. Yeah. Great. Well, we're really excited to, to see the stones there. They're well underway to completion. Uh, and you've got another two two weeks, two, three weeks on site? Uh, this week and another two weeks, yes. The next process is carving uh, and then two coats of very hard wearing German paint. Mm. 